Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name's Thomas and today we're talking about my five favorite filmmaking purchases I've made in the last year or two. Everything I mentioned in this video you could find linked in the description below and pretty much everything I list here is something that I use on a daily basis for my job. So my first item is a working SSD drive and I have two favorites. I've got the Samsung T5 and the SanDisk Extreme Pro. I have a handful of these. I use two of these for work with Sam. I have two of my own for my Blackmagic Pocket 6K. And then I have three of these SanDisk Extreme SSDs. And all these drives are insanely fast. They're lightweight, they're USB-C. And essentially the reason why I have so many of these is because we have a lot of projects going on at once, whether it's weddings, YouTube videos, other client work, Patreon videos. We wanna have everything that we're working on on these drives because they're light and they edit really fast. But then when we are done with these projects, we just back them up to our G drive desktop drives, which we use the 10 terabyte Thunderbolt 3s. And those are really fast too, but for editing larger projects, you wanna be mostly off of really fast drives. So that's why we use SSDs. These drives are great for on location backing up or editing because of how small and lightweight they are. And they're pretty affordable. SSDs have gone a lot cheaper over the years. So there's really no reason not to get an SSD for editing. If I had to redo it, I'd probably get two two terabyte drives instead of two one terabytes and then one two terabyte. Do whatever you feel like your preference is, but having multiple working SSDs makes life a lot easier for managing different projects. And next up on my list for number two is a hard camera case. And I personally have the Nanook 935. The Pelican version of this is the 1510. I went with Nanook because I heard they're a little bit better. I like the latches better and I just feel like they look a bit nicer. But anyways, having a hard shell, having a hard shell case, having a hard camera case is really nice. This size fits as a carry-on item for when you're flying. I haven't flown with one yet, but when I'm shooting locally and I have a bunch of stuff I need to bring or if I need to bring a camera in it, you can really rig it out to whatever your needs are and what you need to bring but having everything all in one location where you need to pull from, whether it's at the studio or like I said, on location out of your car or out in the mountains somewhere, having everything in one spot is just really nice. And that's something that a backpack can't really do. Backpacks are really nice, but when you have a bunch of stuff that you need to grab quickly, especially when you're filming, having a case that flips open and you could see everything in there is just really nice. That's something I held off for a long time, but I'm really glad I made the purchase on it. They go for a few hundred bucks and they should last you a very long time. Organization is key in my workflow and having all of my camera gear organized in one spot, it just makes life so much easier. Third on the list is something that I also held off for a long time and it's a light. There's so many different lights on the market and I bought one used from Sam and it's the Aperture 120D. I have it here lighting me in the studio and having a light just makes life so much easier. All my videos beforehand were with natural light, and if I just turn this off, it just doesn't look that good. But then having this bouncing off the walls, filling in the light on me, it's a lot more pleasing. So I should have bought one a lot earlier. I'm glad that I did now. I have a light stand for it. I got a softbox. I got the Light Dome Mini, which I think is plenty big enough for what I need it for. But I could use it on location if I'm lighting an interview. We use it on the field trip sometimes. Just having a light accessible as a DP, as a cinematographer, it's just really nice to have. Unfortunately, I'm learning that you can never have too many lights and knowing that this is the 120D, it doesn't output that much light. We use the 300D at Sam Studio, which is insanely bright. And then there's a 600D from Aperture and it's like imitating the sun essentially. For a while, I was looking into like the knockoff brands like Godox, but I do think Aperture is worth the price tag. Their ecosystem, and their build quality is just so worth it knowing that if you bring that on set, it's not gonna break. They're durable, they just make sense. And I think they're some of the best around. I think Nanlite is really good too. Of course, Aerie has really gorgeous lights, but for the prosumer market, I think Aperture is the way to go. And the 120D right here, I'm pretty happy with it. So then my fourth item on the list is a C-Stand. And I highly recommend getting the Matthews Grip brand of C-Stands. I wouldn't get the Impact brand or the newer brand version of these. The Matthews brand is just the staple of the grip world. And I never thought I would want or use a C-Stand, but I bought one for an interview boom setup. But C-Stands are way more versatile than just having it as a boom setup. You can put lights on there, sound blankets. You can really rig up anything. I've even rigged up an overhead diffusion sheet. You can use it for so many things and they're pretty affordable at like 140. 
and the Matthews ones are super quick to set up. They're durable. They have a black version, which I think is pretty sick. So yeah, my fifth item is the small rig multi-tool and I have it right here. And what's nice is having this just in my backpack ready to go, especially when we're at a studio or out on location, if we need to change tripod plates, it has a huge flat head. So usually I'll carry quarters or my key, but I don't want to mess up my key. So this one works really well. And what's cool, something that I found out, I think it's, it's one of these, one of these hex keys. There's like a handful of hex keys on here. One of these actually fits on the peak design key and having something a little bit larger that you know is there instead of having like a small black hex key. I just think it's a little bit more reliable and I'm able to find it quicker. I want to get a couple more of these and just leave them in every camera bag I have just in case I forget bringing it. But yeah, you can never go wrong with multi tools or knives on set. I have a little knife and then I have a Leatherman as well as that. So always need to be prepared. It looks really unprofessional if you show up to set and you're not prepared or something goes wrong and you're, and you're not prepared to handle that. So I love being prepared and having the right tools for the job is really important. Okay, so those were the five main items. And then there's a couple bonus ones I wanna talk about. The first one being this little air blower. I'm sure a lot of you have already bought these or have used these. These things are incredible. I use these to clean off the front of my lens like that or my sensor, or if there's dust on the camera, it's just really nice instead of blowing on it because you can get moisture inside your camera. So I always keep that in my camera bag every time we travel or we're at the studio. They're just really nice to bring along. Another bonus item that I love are these little bongo ties. I bought these little red bungee ones off of Amazon. I have like, I don't know, 10 of these. I'm actually mounting my sound blanket on my wall with these. You can never go wrong with carrying too many of these. I have a couple on my camera. So yeah, definitely pick up a bunch of these. You can't go wrong. Again, mounting stuff is just really nice. And with filmmaking, you're pretty much jerry-rigging a lot of things. Another thing, let me go grab it. This one isn't really a purchase. Niles gave this to me on our Iceland trip. Thank you, Niles. And it is a fanny pack. And right now, my fanny pack is kitted out with a point and shoot some chargers, X100V batteries, and some film camera batteries. But I love fanny packs because when you're out filming, I don't really use this with my pocket, but with the C70 having three small BPA30 batteries and SD cards, you're able to fit everything inside of here. So we're going to Alaska soon and I'll be having my big F-stop bag as my main bag. But if we need to go on a hike and I don't want to bring a bunch of stuff, this will be coming along with me. I'll probably carry a small rig tool, probably the rocket blower, and then batteries and really anything else I need. I'll probably put my phone in here. We wear a crossbody and it's super easy to access. And I might even put my film camera in here so when we're out filming, I can grab a few shots. But yeah, I pretty much, I think that's pretty much it. I can't think of anything else that I'm really stoked on from purchasing. Oh, there's actually one more thing got so many bonus items okay so the last bit of bonus items I have a white diffusion sheet it's 12 feet by 5 feet I wish it was more like a square so unfortunately I have to like kind of run it sideways and then run it down to get it to cover but it's not the end of the world I have a think tank bag I have two of these and then I have one of the smaller versions and then inside of this I have a bunch of these photo backdrop clamps and I have like eight of these I need to get more I also use these to mount the diffusion sheet to backdrops I have like a little backdrop stand that I can mount this to I've even clamped my sound blanket you can really clamp anything and just having these accessible especially for studio settings it's just really nice to have but essentially I carry around two of these bags and then I have one small bag for my LPE 6 batteries which I bought from my pocket, but I'm just keeping them for the R6 when I get one. Having everything organized again is just really nice. And my other bag has like chargers, extra cables, diopters, a bunch of other random stuff that I kind of keep as a priority inside my camera case. So that's pretty much it. Those are the five main filmmaking purchases that I've made in the last couple years that I'm pretty stoked on, as well as a bunch of bonus ones. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like if you enjoyed and comment down below some of your favorite items that you use 
for filmmaking. I'd love to know about any other items that I didn't list that you guys are enjoying so I can look into that for myself. So yeah, subscribe if you haven't and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Thank you.